Hey everyone, I'm Keegs, and Moon Knight Episode 1 just premiered, so we are going to talk about it. Now, I don't know a ton about the comic book Moon Knight, but I do have a few insights here or there that you might find a little bit interesting. So far, I think this is one of the more unique Marvel movies that Disney has produced, and there's a lot of intrigue and mystery, and they don't really answer any of it in Episode 1, which I do appreciate because I like some mystery and intrigue throughout the show. Basically though, this is the show about a man with multiple personalities that gets mixed up in some crazy celestial level Egyptian stuff. I think Oscar Isaac's performance so far has really been top notch, and there hasn't been a ton of his multiple personalities playing off of each other, but we did get a little bit here and there, and the stuff we got I really liked. I think we're going to get a lot more of it in the future. But I'm going to get into some spoilers now just for episode one. So if you haven't seen that, come back after you have seen that episode. And we're going to talk about kind of everything that happened in this episode and where we think it's going from here. Starting off, they showed the main antagonist, Ethan Harrow, sitting in a chair, drinking some water from a glass, then crushing that glass up and putting the glass in his shoes to go walk around, which sounds absolutely terrible. But from my knowledge, Ethan has some kind of disease, I think, where he is constantly in pain and ends up becoming addicted to it. So I really wouldn't be surprised if that's actually the reason he ends up going to Egypt in the first place and kind of looking for these gods or something that mystical that could cure him. Speaking of which, I thought that it was kind of funny that in episode one, they made Stephen Grant out to be the main character that we are following the whole time. But in the comics, he is a persona and the original or the real, I'm not sure what you want to call it, is actually Mark Spector. And he is just a figment of Mark Spector's imagination or kind of gets created to help out Moon Knight. And they bring something else to the table, though I'm not sure yet exactly what making that persona has brought to the table. But from my understanding, he does die when he goes down there and gets brought back as Moon Knight and essentially is cursed to be Moon Knight because I don't want to say he can't die because he can get killed, but after he dies, he will always be resurrected. I thought even as just the one persona of Stephen Grant, Oscar Isaac did an amazing job of showing such a range of acting. I mean, at the beginning, he's really happy when he's talking to that child about ancient Egypt and you can tell that this is a subject that he really enjoys and loves to do and he would probably be happy doing that forever. Then we get to see him wake up extremely confused, not sure what the heck's going on. People are shooting at him. He's in a field. He's running away. Then he wakes up again in an ice cream truck and people are dead all around him and he's just really confused the whole time and I really felt like he was confused. One of the saddest scenes I thought for sure in this episode was when he went to dinner at the restaurant and he called up his co-worker who kind of yelled at him for not showing up two days ago and standing her up. But obviously he feels like he's being stood up. So it's just a really bad draw all the way around. And you couldn't help but not feel a little bit bad for really both parties in that situation. And then the scene, he is completely terrified in the elevator when he runs out of his apartment and gets in there. And I mean, come on, you'd be pretty scared too if you saw some crazy Egyptian god plague doctor looking ass coming at you in the middle of the night and I definitely felt the fear from him and I thought that was really well done and it was definitely a mix of fear and confusion as to what is going on with him right now. Ethan Hawke as the villain Arthur also did a great job in this and I couldn't tell if the people were brainwashed or under a spell or they just truly believe that this dude is a messiah. I feel like if someone dies right in front of you because that dude kills her, then you might react to it a little bit, even if you were like, yeah, this dude is the legit messiah. But if he kills somebody in front of you, I feel like you'd be like, OK, let's take a step back. Hold on. But they did not flinch at that. And I guess they did all take a knee in unison. And I feel like really the only way that works is if they're under some kind of spell. I'm not sure if Arthur actually buys into his own act or if he's really just using the power of a newt to gain power. I feel like I could see a situation in where a newt is like, you know, hey, stop 
using me for my power and kicks him off or whatever. But I guess at the same time, Anut, as an Egyptian god, gets their power from more followers. So if he's bringing her more worshippers, then she's becoming more powerful and maybe she'd be on his side actually for reals. I find it funny how the deity inside of Steven's head calls him the idiot, but I don't think he's an idiot. I think he's just more naive, though I guess in those situations you want someone that's really in control so you don't die in some of those situations. But I think by the end of this series that uh, Steven and Mark are going to have to work together and they're going to kind of be in sync at the end in order to harness their full power. The end of the episode was really awesome too when he finally lets Mark take over and become Moon Knight and that little demon thing tries to escape even at one point and he pulls that back and just freaking lays into it and you know I almost felt bad for the little guy at one point. Almost. This episode I thought was a great pilot though and it's set up so many plot lines already with Arthur sucking the life out of people and Layla trying to find out what happened to Mark and then Steven just trying to find out what the heck's going on. But let me know, what do you think of this episode and where do you think it is going in the next episode and further down into the season? I'm Keegs and I hope to catch you all for my next talk on episode two next week.